Hey up troops, welcome back to the Latana Army, I'm Lit and this is Fortnite Save the World. And what I want to look at today is must have weapons in Fortnite Save the World. Now there's going to be personal preference, for example like the hacksaw is absolutely awesome but it's not on the list. I've not put a lot of event items on the list. Most of these weapons or all of these weapons I'm going to try for, you should be able to get right now. Now what I want to see as well in the comments down below, let me know what your three favourite weapons may be. It could be a melee weapon, it could be a shotgun, you know, it could be an AR, whatever it may be. But what are your three favourite weapons? So not necessarily the best but what are your favorites and i'm going to give you a list of weapons that you really should try and get hold of and try and level up so stay tuned Okay then, so the first one that you'll have seen is the Silent Spectre. This is one that I go to quite a lot. I did a bit of a review on this already. And the main reason is that it's just got such an insane DPS on it. The rate of fire is really good on it. And best of all, it's geared for crit builds. So it's already got good crit stats on there. If you have a look on here, you know, look at this. A 48% crit chance and then 75% critical hit damage. So there's a huge chance every other shot by rights almost, I'll be hitting a critical shot with, and then I'll be getting 75% extra damage off that. There's not many weapons that can compete with that. Despite what people say, you know, not a lot of people have got their own favorite ARs, but surely with a rate of fire like that, there's not a lot that can do it. The only downside to it really is that it's really short range, and the initial starting magazine size is really low. So one thing that you would need to do you know, is go over to modify perks and just keep doing this one up as much as what you can. I've got literally one free perk left down there, so I won't be doing that just yet, but that's one thing that it does suffer from. So it's got a smallish magazine size and it definitely needs help when it comes to that to make sure you get the most out of it. So short range, low magazine size, but in return, you do get insane DPS, you do get a great rate of fire on that, and it's absolutely fantastic for hitting those crits. So if you're using it on someone like, I don't know, a Raider or Master Grenadier or an Urban Assault Headhunter, someone like that then you're gonna absolutely get the most out of this bullet storm jones is also good for this because it just empties the mag out super fast which is exactly what you need for clearing a big wave so a massively important weapon at the minute and i don't think there's much that matches it if we compare it with the siege breaker here i've got a siege breaker at about the same level if you look on there the siege breaker's on the right over there so the siege breaker's got slightly more damage on there and it's also got uh, well quite a bit more headshot damage on there as well the difference is here look critical hit chance 48 percent but also on there as well you've got the critical hit rating on there as well so critical hit chance and critical hit damage 48 percent so that's pretty much every other shot and then also on there critical hit damage 75 percent where this falls extremely short the siege, the siege breaker has got 10 percent and it's got a 50 percent hit uh, critical hit damage on there as well now the good thing about that is that you can you know modify it with stats so i've got no crit stats on there to be fair to the siege breaker on that as it stands right now the fire rate though 12 on the siege breaker which is really good but 14.16 there are guns that can fire faster than the silent spectre but not many as i said it's, it's really limited same magazine size i've got the magazine size perk on there for 38 percent extra now the range here look is quite a lot shorter 3584 where the the siege break has actually got 4,000, so it is slightly further. Durability is the same. Reload speed slightly faster on the Silent Spectre. Ammo cost one, obviously that's the same. The impact as well. Now the impact is slightly higher on the siege breaker, but given the fire rate, you're gonna be pumping out bullets a lot, lot quicker. So this doesn't really matter as much. So he actually makes up for it, given at this ridiculous rate of fire. So the first weapon that I would say, if you're gonna be using ARs, would be Silent Spectre. Okay, now looking at pistols that you can get then, we showed this off, I think it was only yesterday. The Viper's definitely great. Now some people were saying in the comments that in Twine that kind of changes and it can be a little bit different when you get to Twine, which is absolutely Okay, you know, I understand that and um, twines are a totally different beast to the rest of the game But while you're leveling up and going through Stonewood, Plankerton, Canny Valley Then the Viper is a great choice if you're using someone like Raider or like Raven Do you know someone like that one of those two characters what you'll get from the Viper is a really well-rounded weapon It does slightly more DPS than the Thrasher or the Riptide I know some people said what about these two guns the Viper does slightly more damage than them two Now some people do fall, you know, they do favor the Falcon or the Bald, or the bald Eagle over the top of those but for me, the rate of fire is not great. They're really good single shot, big DPS guns. But did you know what? If you want huge single shot damage, then you need to try out, you know, the Dragon's Breath's probably better than even those two. Better than the Bald Eagle and better than the Falcon. Let's just have a quick look at this. So this one is slightly better, I think, than the Bald Eagle and the Falcon. Everyone's different. Some of this will come down to personal choice for you. So don't think that, oh, you know, Latana said get the Dragon's Breath so I can't use the Bald Eagle anymore. Use whatever you like. I think I saw A1 get this money, do a 1 million DPS shot with a Bald Eagle. 
so that is by no means a weak weapon. However, as I said, I do think that the Dragon's Breath, looking at it from a paper point of view, do you know, if you do the stats up right on it, do you know, I've not leveled this one up yet, but if you level it up right, then you can actually get more bang for your buck out of the Dragon's Breath. Okay then, so another great one that I've got that I've not leveled up yet, I used to do, I used to go with the Room Sweeper all the time, but I saw somebody using this the other week. This was a, just let me just get the view on that for you. This is the Tiger Jaw. Now the Tiger Jaw, the guy was telling me, has got the highest burst DPS in the game. I'm not saying if that's true. If it's used with Raider, White Sushi says in his spreadsheet that this is an absolute beast. So one of my projects that I'm working at at the minute is getting you guys some gameplay with this Tiger Jaw because apparently this is an absolute legendary weapon when you actually get it with the right hero and you're actually using it in the right way. You know, honourable mention has to go out to the Hacksaw. Do you know, the Hacksaw is one of my favourite weapons. The Hacksaw has got a great magazine size, a good rate of fire. Uh, it's, you know, it's quite accurate. But it was, a, it, you know, it was event based, so you're not going to get your hands on that if you didn't snap it up the first time around. However, that said, you know, the Tiger Jaw is an absolutely fantastic alternative if you've not got access to the Hacksaw. And then also as well, the Room Sweeper is another great alternative if you've not got access to those. So let's take on to Snipers then. So looking at Snipers, okay, now you probably knew this one already. There's some great Snipers in the game, but the main one comes down to Super Shredder. You know, that's always the king of the actual Sniper Rifles. I don't think anything's topped that just yet. The Obliterator is great fun to use, but the recoil on that is absolutely nuts. It, it, you know, it packs such great power, but with reloading it and the recoil it gets, it just doesn't get the job done like a good Super Shredder does. For picking off targets from range, you know, if you've got the right setup on there as well, then it's an absolute beast of a weapon, and one, you know, everybody should have. If you've not got a Super Shredder, this should be one that you're working towards all at the time, because it's just got so much to give, as I said, and it's got, if you look at mine on there, I've got the damage increase, which I've not done with yet, reload speed, and I've got the water elemental, because I use it to pick off Chrome Husk, but you can use it how you want. Uh, headshot damage, you've got affliction target on there, so it's 30% damage to afflicted targets and causes affliction damage for six seconds. This is one of my favorite weapons that I actually own. And looking at melee then, again, this is, goes down to personal favorite, and we're gonna get to sides in a moment, but better than the sides, and only because, this is only because it's got a broader range. Using it with Harvester, St uh, Harvester Sarah actually changes all this, but using the Stone Blade is probably the best one for me. That's, that's the one that I think is the absolute best one. And the reason it's the best one for me is because because it used to, well, it used to be able to have double elemental perks on there, which were great. So you could have like energy damage and water damage on there as well. I think they've changed that now. Let's just have a quick look. I don't think you're able to do that anymore. I don't know if it was a bug or a glitch or whatever it was, or an oversight on their part or whatever. But you used to be able to get double elemental rolls on there. An energized blade with a fast swing speed and great sustainable damage deals energy damage that is fairly effective against elemental enemies, cut and thrust, a series of three heavy attacks that cut twice and thrust once while moving forward. If I'm taking a sword, it just I always just go to this one. This seems to be the go-to sword. Now the two sides that you've got, a lot of people tend to go for this one. So the neon side is really popular. I've only got the epic version of that one, but I think the better side is the Reaper. This one's better as well. And again, I've got to finish leveling this up. I'm, I'm actually using a, a Reaper side, what I've got from Detective Cheese at the moment. So if we go to Armory and Backpack, and let's view this one that he's made for me. Oh, it's the neon side that he gave me. So that's the neon side uh, that he gave me. Look at these camera angles. Anyone else had that? So that's the actual camera angle of the neon side, which is down there. It's hiding down there somewhere. Maybe it's sad and it's hiding in the corner. Uh, but look at the, I mean, the neon side is really great. I, I probably prefer the Reaper side um, as a bit of a, you know, it's probably my go-to weapon when it comes to size. But this, the one he built me, oh my God. I mean, this just does insane amounts of damage. So it's a 130 neon side that we've got there. The Reaper side, slightly different, is this one. And again, currently leveling this up, but this one is absolutely phenomenal. And if you look at that on there, you know, need some upgrades on it. You know, need to get some Reaper, need to get that done up. But I've gone for the Affliction on there, crit damage on there as well. I'll probably change this one, not just sure yet. I might do Life Leech on that one, just for the extra survivability on there. And then the damage, I'm going to push all the way up to the top where I can. So when it comes to sides, I'll probably go that. So my personal order would be Stormblade first, just because more heroes can use it. And then I would probably go for the Reaper Scythe after that, closely followed by the Neon Scythe. So just a quick, quick recap on all of those then. So the ones I would go for, the Silent Spectre when it comes to ARs, definitely awesome. Just because of that, I said that insane DPS and that great rate of fire that it's got and it's geared around crit build. That is my go-to weapon. At, at the minute of everything that I've said, the Silent Spectre personally for me, that's my number one. I know other people have got different, but that's my go-to weapon at the moment. Pistol, I would probably say... Again, up at least up to Twine. I'm not sure about Entwine yet, but up to Twine, I would definitely go Viper. And again, you can't go wrong with a Falcon or a Bald Eagle as well. But Wave Clear, again, if you've got one, go Hacksaw first. If you've not, then I would go Tiger Jaw. 
and then maybe a room sweeper if you've got neither of those two. Snipers, I would go probably Super Shredder, because that's the king, not even probably. Snipers are Super Shredders, that's what it's all about. The Obliterator is okay, but there's too many shortfalls with it to make it a viable weapon. And then when it comes to melee, like we just talked about, Stormblade, Reaper Scythe, and then Neon Scythe. Reaper Scythe and Neon Scythe are much of a muchness, you know, there's not much difference in either. But I would probably go Stormblade first, or if you're going to use Harvest Sarah, then get one of the Reaper or the Neon Scythes to use after that. But guys, you know, again, a lot of this is personal preference. You let me know what you think down below. I'd love to know why that's your favourite weapon as well. Do you know, one of my favourite weapons, as a lot of people know, is the bear. Just because it does, it has such high impact and it does great damage, you know, for close up. So it's really good to use in sticky situations. But let me know what your favourite three weapons are and put a little description underneath as to why. Because I would love to read all those and have a look what you guys are rocking at the moment. Okay, so that's all we've got time for now then, guys. If you're not part of the Latana army already, make sure you hit that red button on your way out. And I will catch you on the next video. Take care now.